Hello, I'm David Ruzik, Illinois Energy Prof. And I'm here today to tell you about China's nuclear energy program. And you might say, why? Well, it's this graph. You see that blue line? You see how it's going like that? This is world energy use. And the number right now is 620 quads. That's quadrillion BTU. That's a lot of energy. Now you see two more lines on this graph. You see one that goes about like this, flat. And actually we should be very proud of that. This is US energy use at 94 quads. Long ago, around World War II, the US still only had 5% of the world's population, but it is using half the energy. Since that time, we've become more efficient with our energy use. We have become even with higher population and a higher GDP. There's one other energy graph on here, and that's China. And you can see that China went like this, and then in 2004, it started shooting up. What happened in 2004? China allowed private property to be owned. By allowing private property to be owned, people could work harder, they would leave money to their families, you could join the capitalistic economic system. And that number has continued to rise till today it's at 166. The world and China both want more energy. This is not even a factor of two yet, yet China has four times the population of the United States. There should be no question in your mind at all that this world energy use consumption graph is going to continue to rise. So what are we going to do about it? Well, since half of our electric use approximately in the United States, maybe a little bit less, is making electricity, we're going to build more power plants. And then that begs the question, well, what kind of power plants? Um, we could do more fossil fuels. We could make solar and wind. I mean, they don't make CO2 after all. Of course, the wind stops now and then, and you know, it gets dark at night. Or we could do nuclear power. Well, to make that kind of decision, you really need to look at what are our energy sources today. This is from 2023 data. It doesn't change that dramatically every year. And you can see that uh, oil and natural gas are our um, main energy uses, our main energy sources. And if I take all three fossil fuels, this comes up to 82% of our energy is from fossil fuels. Um, hey, when I first started teaching 40 some years ago, that number was 85%, yay. Uh, and you can also see that wind and solar, which we think of as, oh my God, we make so much wind and solar, because you see windmills everywhere and everyone wants to put up solar panel farms. It's still pretty small, folks, a couple percent. Now, this is total energy. You know, multiply that by uh, two, if you'd like, for electricity, but they're still relatively small. Nuclear power as 9% of our energy, and therefore maybe 19% of our electricity, is a constant and real factor. The real comparison, though, since this is a video about China, is to ask where does China get its energy from? And that number in red is pretty damning. It is still predominantly coal. That number used to be 70%, though, and the Chinese are committed to make it lower. If we add up their fossil fuel contribution, that comes up to 86%. They have actually quite a bit of wind and solar, because keep in mind, they use more energy than us. But you can see that their nuclear sector is still small. Now, so I've been going to China fairly frequently since, um, oh, the late 1990s all the way up to about 2016. And I remember taking these pictures in uh, 2010. I was at the Beijing airport. We had come in from another city, 
And this is two in the afternoon and the sky looked like this. Uh, that dot there, that's the sun. Um, we were at a hotel and it had rained that night. I took a picture the next morning. Oh wow, look over the chi beautiful Chinese city. And uh, the next day, a day's worth of pollution. And same camera, same time of day, same view. Uh, China has a problem with air pollution. Has it gotten better since 2010? Probably. Uh, but that percentage of their power made by coal is really something that leads to this. So China needs nuclear power. And they know it. Look at this graph. This is the amount of nuclear generation in China. And it's gone from virtually nothing at all. And in the last 10, 15 years, it is going up at an enormous rate. In fact, let's compare this to some numbers in the rest of the world. I know the numbers here are small, but this is the number of nuclear reactors. And the US has the most with uh, 93 operating nuclear reactors. You can see second there is France. And France uh, has 56, but at least at the end of 23 here, China already had 55. Of course, China's so much bigger and uses so much more energy. If we go to the percentage of electricity generated by nuclear power, France is the star. Their percentage generated is 65%. Two thirds of their uh, electricity in France is made by nuclear power. And if we go down to the United States, all right, in the United States, we have 19% of our electricity is generated by nuclear power. And you go down to China, and that number is only 5%. Just as much power as France is making, but because China is so much larger, it's only right now 5% of their electricity. But China really needs nuclear to replace that coal. And therefore, this is an extremely telling graph. The data on the graph was the end of 23. I looked up to see in 24, there are now fully 28 reactors being built right now in China. There's uh, <laughs> one in France and one in the US. This is a telling number. So what kind of reactors are they building? Well, amazingly, these are the generation three passively safe reactors. And what do I mean by passively safe? It means everything goes wrong, people have turned off the water, the tidal wave has hit, everything you can imagine, and it can just sit there. You don't have to pump cooling water in, you don't have to keep the core covered, it just does it by convection. And that is pretty dramatic. The most recent one we've built in the United States is indeed a passively safe Gen 3 reactor. But they've been building them and have them in running for a decade. Now, many of these were originally our United States Westinghouse AP1000 design. And indeed, Westinghouse contracted with China and they built the plants. And then, of course, the Chinese figured out how to do it themselves and how to patent all of the things that are needed and how to source all the things. And now this type of reactor is being built and they have nine more of them in the complete Chinese design under construction. There's also the French design. The French, of course, tried to build or did build reactors there and the Chinese learned how to do it and the Chinese came up with their own very similar design and this is even a reactor they export around the world and build in other places. And they have 13 of these of that 28 being built. But let's not forget the Russians. The Russians have had a close cooperation with China for many, many years. And there are four of the Russian designed reactors being built as well. So not Chernobyl type, these are the power PWR reactors with containment buildings and the right kind of cooling, et cetera. But what is even more impressive about China is that they actually have generation four 
reactors operating. Operating, not just planned, not just in research stages, not just the first prototypes being built, but operating. And if you remember my last video, Gen 4 reactors are the ones that run on a fast neutron cycle. And what this allows you to do, even though you need higher enrichment fuel to start it, is you can use the laws of physics. If a Gen 4 reactor gets too warm, it shuts down. I don't care what you've done to it and how many axes you've thrown in the wrenches you've thrown into it, how many bombs you've dropped on it. I don't know about bombs. But uh, you cannot get a Gen 4 reactor to overheat because as soon as the fuel gets warm, the resonances absorb the neutrons. It also eats up its long-lived nuclear wastes and it runs at higher temperatures, so it's much more efficient. And they have four full-scale ones being built and several of the type that we're trying to build now, the modular, small modular reactors that today I talked about in my last Energy Prof video are in construction stages in the United States. Those have been operating for some time in China so they can actually build new reactors. How long does it take to build them? This has always been a bugaboo of nuclear construction. In the United States, sometimes this can go to eight years or 10 years, all right? Everyone says you should be able to do it in five years. France can do it in five years, and so does China. There's a chart there, I know it's small, but it shows the start date and the planned completion date of both things that have already actually only taken that long and ones that are in progress today. So what about the costs? The detractors of nuclear power's best argument against nuclear power is it costs too much to build. Everyone will agree that if everything goes right and the thing runs for 40 years, its price comes down because the fuel costs are so much less, but it still takes an enormous capital investment. And you can look at this in terms of the dollars per kilowatt hour capacity of the reactor. It's a good comparison number. And amazingly, in China, they can do it much cheaper and faster than we can do it in the West. Their Chinese design, the one that was based off of the French design, right, 2600, the one based off the AP1000 design, 2440, these are real numbers because they built them for this cost. This is about one-third the cost of the last reactor we built in the States. So how does China do this? Well, they do it because all of the power plants in China are government controlled, government run. And they can loan up to 70% of the money to make these projects work at ridiculously low interest, like 1.4%. You should read the rest of this quote. It covers more of the things that I've just been telling you about. And it's interesting that the United States has such a loan office, the Department of Energy Loan Program Office, that could do the same thing. It's designed to promote the types of projects that the government thinks are very important. And it has the ability to make similar types of loans and has in the past to other energy infrastructure. Now, what about technology? You might say, okay, China can copy all this, but they can't create it themselves. Not so true anymore. Nuclear science and engineering is probably the most prestigious journal for scientific literature in this particular field of power plants and, and new technology. And you can see that in the most highly cited papers, that line going up like this, that's uh, China again, folks. And the lines coming down are Europe and the United States. So their knowledge about the technology is also very good. When people say China is on the rise, they are in many respects. 
There's other parts of nuclear power you need. You need the fuel cycle. You've got to get the uranium and you have to enrich it. In terms of supply, China mines about a third of its own. They mine in other countries where they built the mining infrastructure about a third of their uranium, and then they buy a third on the open market. Buying uranium isn't enough. You have to enrich it. Originally, the Russians built enrichment plants inside China, and now China is fully capable of making its own enrichment plants and has been doing so. So the future. Well, China has extremely ambitious plans. They say that they will build 150 more reactors by the year 2035. Now, I know people have these plans, these five-year plans and 10-year plans, and maybe they all won't come completely true. But their goal is to get to that same 20% level of electricity like we have. And they certainly have the funds and the desire and the need and the ability to do that. And of course, they're also building nuclear reactors for other countries. They're selling this technology as well. So in conclusion, China is going nuclear. And the rest of the world should pay attention and should do it too. We already buy virtually all of our solar panels from China and a whole lot of other goods. Better be careful or we may be buying nuclear reactors from them as well. And that's what you need to know about the Chinese nuclear 